Hello everybody. So finally after a long delay, I finally have some time to uh, make another video. So as promised, this is going to follow up on my previous Phenom uh, build. This is the HD995, or, or what is it called really, the Phenom X4-9950. So this is a 2.6 GHz quad-core original Phenom line uh, CPU from AMD based on the K10 architecture. It fit into socket. I think it's designed for socket AM2 plus, but it could also fit into AM2 socket motherboards if it is compatible with the BIOS. Uh, let's see if I'm reading anything. Uh, main limitations are the same that apply to um, the Phenom 2. This lacks SS SSE 4.1 support and obviously ABX instruction sets. So uh, this is the Black Edition CPU. Uh, so it's like I guess it's it was like they're probably their flagship. It was released in the Q1 of 29 of 2009. So by now it is 12 years old. Uh, Going to be 13 years old soon. Uh, the process core's codename is Agena K10, like I said. Instruction sets include MMX 3D Now, SSZ1 through SSZ4A, AMD64, AMD V, and the usual. So this is DDR2 CPU, uh, DDR2 only. So let's go ahead. Let's see what else I'm going to be putting on. Let me put down my tablet with CPU information. So like I said, clocked at 2.6 gigahertz, so definitely a reduction in clock speed from the Phenon 2. And this was originally competing with the the core, uh, the original Core 2 quad line, I believe, or supposed to compete with the original Core 2 quad line. So for our video card, we're going to be using a GTX 1060. This is the same one I ended up benching the Phenom 2 with. This is an OEM variant, so it was the cheapest I could before, I, that I could find before the GPU apocalypse. Our motherboard is going to be this Gigabyte. AM3, AM2 Plus motherboard. I believe this is, if I read it correctly beforehand, this is a 785 something. Here, let me see if I can find it on here. That's good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> here we go. This is a GAMA785GM-UH2S. Or US2H. Sorry. I can read correctly too as well. So this is AM3, AM2 Plus based system. Uh, this is these are DDR2 memory slots. Oh, wait, if I put this in the frame. These are DDR2 memory slots. Uh, we have a single PCI Express 2.0 uh, 16x connection, uh, 1x connection, two conventional PCI slots. We have five SATA 2 ports, uh, an IDE port, fl <laughs> floppy connector port, 8-pin uh, CPU power connector. We have um, passive cooling, I mean, no cooling at all on the VRMs, so not going to be a lot of overclocking on this board. I believe this is a budget board. Uh, it's got integrated graphics too as well. I believe that the AT AMD or ATI 4250. Let's see if I can angle this right. There we go. So we have in integrated HDMI, DVI, VGA, combo PS2 port, two USB 2 ports. There are two USB 2 ports, Firewire 800, eSATA, I believe that's a combo with the USB port. There are two USB 2.0 ports, gigabit Ethernet, and audio. So this is what's going to be the basis for the system. So that's going to be combined with these G-Skill um, F2 6400 CL6S 4 gigabyte NQs. These are 4 gigabyte DDR2 800 megahertz modules. These are not buffered. I believe it will work in the system. Otherwise, I have these um, 2 gig super talent modules that I'll use in, in case. So otherwise, I'm hoping to be able to use these for 16 gigs of memory instead of using these for 8 gigs of memory, but we'll see. For cooling, we're going to be using a AMD uh, stock cooler. This is a uh, 125 watt CD, uh, TDP CPU. So this is going to be interesting to see if this works. But obviously, I, I don't care about the thermals in this. The, the system's only going to be for testing. As long as it's not thermal throttling, then, then that's an issue. To storage, this is going to be the same as previous. We have a 180 gig SATA 3 SSD. It's going to be running at SATA 2 with Windows 10. And a 750 gig, uh, that's just an old laptop hard drive I had that I used for Steam games. So I'm going to go ahead, get everything up, set up on a test bench, uh, boot it into the BIOS, and we'll uh, go over the BIOS. Uh, we'll go over um, the system configuration I end up going with, and then we'll install Windows 10, update all the drivers, and we'll play some games, do some benchmarks. Okay, so we got everything set up on my super legitimate test bench. So we have our 1060 installed. We have a 750 or 650 watt Antec power supply. I believe there's fan connections. I just 
uh, secure them on the side. Uh, we have our power connectors all hooked up, CPUs installed, RAMs installed, uh, video, uh, how do I said the video card, uh, our drives are two, our true drives are installed, if I can speak. <laughs> And our SATA ports, luckily these two on the edge just fit over this video card. Uh, it obscures all the rest. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this to mod. Let's see if we can get into the BIOS. So you can see we got into the BIOS just fine. Um, I had to boot this up first and disable the internal graphics. It kept trying to output to that. So I disabled the iGPU. And now we're running on the 1060 with no issue. Looks like our memory is clocked at auto at 800 megahertz. That's fine. If we go in here, date looks good. I put a fresh clock battery on it. We have our full 16 gigs of RAM, which is kind of awesome. The DDR2 RAM, which is weird, but, uh, you know, we got our four cores. Uh, got Everything looks pretty good. I had to go to the hard disk priority and just make sure that the SSD was the first one to boot up. And I had to also change this to boot the uh, PCI Express graphics card first. So. See, is there anything else fun in here? I have HCI on. Oh, no, this is definitely what we call a uh, a limited BIOS. Not a limited BIOS, but uh, not as a feature. Like, you know, modern BIOS has got, you know, GUIs and everything crazy. And this is just the classic list of everything. You change it, you know. I kind of like these better, to be honest. So, CPU temperature looks like it's in the low 40s right now. Ambient temperature is probably in the mid-20s in this room. 20 degrees Celsius, so... And we're going to go ahead, let me see if I can boot this right into Windows. I had to use this PS2 keyboard uh, for some reason. This regular wireless USB keyboard is not detected by the BIOS. So I'm using a old, you can see me in the reflection, an old uh, PS2 IBM keyboard. Let's see, do I have Windows 10 installed on this SSD? I think I do. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to let it boot up and I'm going to install the drivers and we'll be back with some benchmarks. Okay, so after a uh, few hours, finally got everything set up. So as you can see, um, in CPU-Z, we have our Phenom X4 9950 Black Edition. It's a 65 nanometer CPU. Uh, right now, it's clocking uh, anywhere up to 2.6 gigahertz, all the way down to like 1.3 gigahertz. That's a cool and client working. It's got, um, two, it's got 2 megs of L2 cache, 2 megabytes of L3 cache, and four cores, four threads with a two gigahertz hyper threading link, uh, HD link, I mean, not hyper threading, uh, hyper transport, sorry. So we have SSE, SSE2, SSE3, SSE4A, but no SSE4.1 or AVX, as I said earlier. And we want to go to our main board here. We have our GA-MA785GM-U2H. And we see it's using the 785G chipset. Uh, it's on the latest BIOS, which is from 2012. And our GPU is running at 16X and PCI Express 2.0. We have our 16 gigabytes of DDR2 running at 800 megahertz. And as you can see, we have our GeForce 1060. It's up to the, with the latest NVIDIA drivers, uh, date of uh, June 8th of 2021. And um, let's see the temperatures. Temperatures, the CPU is definitely running a little hot. But that's expected of that dinky <laughs> stock cooler we have on there. Uh, my WD hard drive is definitely sitting, um, or I mean, it's definitely spitting out some annoying noises. So it, it's probably angry at me for treating it bad. But um, hopefully it'll handle my games still fine. Uh, it took a long time to download all my games uh, or download all the updates for the games I want to run. That's mainly because of slow hard drive speed. I actually have a, a gig fiber connection to my apartment. But the hard drive is obviously the bottleneck. If I had a game SSD, it would probably have gone faster. And the CPU. My general thoughts of using this computer so far is that it's, it's definitely usable. But multitasking, especially with only multiple game launchers I have running on it, uh, to demo all these games, it, it's slow. It, it really slows down. So, and you could tell uh, the age of the system. But for general use, it's still fine. Like, I'm able to use it to browse the internet and, you know, install, download, install programs. Just, just like everything, as soon as you start getting into heavy multitasking, the age of the platform really starts showing itself. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to run a Cinebench R15 run. And then after that, I'm going to run a Passmark test. I ignore the River Tuna statistics. Uh, I could minimize them out, but I'll just leave them up for right now. Uh, I'll go ahead and run the Cinebench and then run the performance test, and we'll see the results. So after a few tries, we finally got a Cinebench um, run to work. Well, I mean, well, Cinebench and a Passmark, but the Passmark is only partial. I'll go into the details there in a second. But as you can see, we have a absolutely pathetic uh, Cinebench R15 run. 
We have a total score of 223, which really slots us around a mobile third gen Intel CPU at 1.7 gigahertz. So it's 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 bad. Basically, the the CPU is really showing its age. You'd get better performance probably with a Core 2 quad. And or I mean even a little bit of an overclock would help in this case, but with the motherboard I have, it's definitely wouldn't be able to push the CPU any higher than it, than it already is. So at its stock clock. In terms of a pass mark score, I was unable to run the 3D mark. It keeps crashing. I don't know if that's an issue with the CPU or the program or the GPU, but 3D marks it just keeps it keeps uh, failing. So I did a partial uh, run right now. Our CPU is in the seventh percentile which is, uh, I guess, <laughs> pretty bad. Our 2D per- uh, mark is in the 32nd percentile, which is, I guess, decent. Memory is in the 4th percentile, so DDR2 is basically dead in terms of, like, high- any performance, you know. Think of it, it's going to be three generations behind pretty soon, so. And every generation, it doubles the speed, so. And then in um, our disk mark, we got a... Uh, all right, 21st percentile, even though we're running on a solid-state drive. It's obviously capped at SATA 2, so that, that, that's the reason why yeah, the score is low. I'm going to go ahead and try to run the 3D mark again, and if it works, I'll record the scores. Otherwise, we'll go into some games. The past mark uh, GPU test failed again, so um, I'm going to go ahead and just like, ignore that because um, I kind of a little bit time-limited here, so I want to try to get some game benchmarks done and wrap this video up. So I separated the games I want to test. I'm not going to test all of these, but these are some that we can play. Uh, the ones on the left are ones that probably will work, according to mine. Uh, I'm just guessing. But these ones on the right definitely won't work. I believe they all require new CPU instruction sets. So we'll try some games on the left, and we'll see how they perform. First game we're going to try is Minecraft. So this is the latest version. And here are the settings. We are doing fast graphics, uh, VSync off, Unlimited frame light, and I left everything else to default. So, you know what? We actually turn the clouds off as well. FOV is normal. Let's go ahead and we'll just play a game real quickly. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, free New World. Okay. It's been a while since I played Minecraft. So, but I thought this was an appropriate game to test this setup with. Obviously, the GPU is powerful enough, but it looks like we are maxing out our CPU. It's definitely getting hot too, as well. It's definitely not a cool room in here, so. This is really going to take this long? 0%. I don't know, I haven't seen this before. Okay. <laughs> I wonder how quick this normally takes on a, on a, norm, a modern system. It's been a while, so. And so we're at 28%, our CPU is crunching along. <laughs> Some uh, very important YouTube content here. So the other games, I'll see if I could just cut to allow him, you know, in game. So, Or I should probably, this is my first time playing Minecraft on this test setup, so I probably should just get it ready in the first place. Okay, we're 100%. Join this world. Okay, so it's going to be a little slow loading all these chunks in. Oh, look, we spawned right next to the village. Okay, let's let me let, me let these chunks load. It's weird. You can see the FPS. Let me go full screen here. Is that still F11? Yeah. Uh, yeah, our, um... Our FPS is now, this is at a 1200p resolution, and our FPS is, I consider this playable. Well, I mean, I haven't done any optimization here, but like, for Minecraft, you could, pr- if you turn down the chunks and all the graphics settings, we'd probably be getting a lot higher frame rate. But so at this state, with these just default settings I made, and the um, frame rate we're getting, which is, you know, anywhere from, uh, 20 to 30 to 50 FPS. It's usually, I can see when the chunks happen, that's when the FPS drops. Oh, it's actually in 60 in some areas. Now the chunks have loaded up, but you, you can see the frame times are terrible because like when the chunks are loading in, but when you have all the chunks loaded in and stuff, it's not bad. So this is definitely playable on this configuration. Definitely not most power efficient configuration. So let's go ahead and try another game. So this is uh, another popular game. This is uh. If you couldn't tell, Fortnite. 
Uh, I have it at uh, 1200p, uh, 100% resolution scale, and medium details. And you can see our CPU is maxed out. That's all at 100%. Uh, how do I do this game again? All right, so here we go. I'm jumping down. I'm also try to get my audio a little bit more centered. It's just difficult to play with a camera in front of me. Here, go down, down. How do I... What am I doing wrong here, people? I'm a professional at this game. There we go. No, no. I want to go. I want to go down faster. Oh well. No. Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah, oh. Look at this. This is what we call pro Fortnite play. Oh, there's a an aliens, of course. What am I doing wrong? Is, is my keyboard not working right now? Oh, now it is. I think I was out of range. Whoops. I want to try to just get on the ground so I can see what the FPS would be. Because right now, it's <laughs> the frame times are everywhere. Yeah, I think my keyboard is uh, not cooperating with me right now. Now it is. Okay. Oh, uh, I could definitely drop the settings down and get, um, you know, oh, you could drive things now? Look at this. I mean, I could definitely change the settings on this, but because you know frame times are terrible right now, uh, you can see like these like lag spikes and all that fun stuff. But I mean, we're getting a decent FPS just because of the GPU and because our CPU is just maxed out. But uh, yeah, here let's see what happens if I don't die. Uh, let's go to low. Oh wow, then now, then now this is graphical uh, fidelity. People are fighting. Let me see if I can go kill them with this. I don't even know what I'm doing. Yeah, these frame, these the SFPS is just not good. I could probably get away. You could get away playing if you didn't have to load in these new sections and hit the CPU. Is there a horn on this? Probably just gonna leave. <laughs> Has no one even decided to try to kill me? I'm doing solo, so I don't ruin anyone else's game. Here's shooting. There's a ton of shooting going on. Let's see if I can just go hit somebody with this. Is that a fish? Uh, I was about to, I was about to say FPS is the frame times. Oh, there's somebody. Let's see if he wants to lift. Oh, I'm gonna get him. Yeah. Oh, lagging out. Oh, I missed. I'm low on fuel, I'm low on gas. This is ridiculous. Oh, am I gonna get him? Yeah. Ooh, got him. <laughs> oh man, I feel bad for that person. Oh, there's another, there's another vic victim. Can I drive across the water while I stall out? Ooh. Surprise. <laughs> oh, man. Fear me. I am the professional Fortnite player. I'm the Phenom 9950 Black... Oh, I'm out of gas? Aw. Uh, there you go. I'm winning this game, you know. Chicken dinner are all mine. Ah, well, I'm probably going to quit out. i got to test a new game soon. Look at this, you know. You get, we have it on terrible graphics mode, but I mean, I guess it's technically playable. I mean, like, you know, the, it's these lag spikes that get you, uh, you know, the frame time spikes that get you. And that'll probably, like, prevent you from being, like, you go pro at this game, but it works. There's somebody else. Let me see if they'll kill me. Oh, someone's doing that for me. Nah. Dip, dodge, stuff. Boom, 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 boom. Look at this accuracy. I've always been known for my accuracy. Oh, oh, she's got a shotgun. Oh, get wrecked. Look at this. I'm on a rampage, you know. <laughs> I really need to start playing it. <laughs> I really start needing testing out a different game, but. 
Where's that person that's shooting me? I want them to kill me. Just so I have an excuse. I don't even have shields or anything. Yeah, I just start, you know, dinner bell. Come on, people. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm just going to quit out. I'll take my victory. So, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and roll. We'll, we'll try another game. Here we are running the GTA 5 benchmark. Um, as you can see, we're averaging you know, in the mid 60s right now, uh, mid to upper 60s. Uh, this is at 1200 P, I believe medium settings or whatever settings it defaults to. So we'll, I'll let it run and then we'll see what the score we get. Okay, here's another, um, uh, swiftly on to another game. Uh, we're playing Halo 4 now. The GTA 5 benchmark ended up finishing, but I didn't capture the results. Let's say in the urban areas, it ended up going down into the mid-30s. With further op optimizations, it would definitely be playable. It wouldn't be optimal, but it would be playable. Uh, my mice keeps cutting out here. So here's Halo 4 from the Master Chief's collection, and it's running pretty fine. So you'd be able to play this and probably all the other games in the Halo Master Chief collection with no issues. So if my mouse was, you know, better. So, what if I do this? Oops. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and we'll try another game. So now we're playing Doom 2016. Uh, this is the Vulcan mode, uh, Vulcan rendering mode at 1200p. And with Vulcan, this game is just uh, like amazing. Like we're getting like 100 FPS. We're inside right now, but I mean, it's very smooth considering the hardware is running on. This is very impressive. If the new game was able to run on older CPU instruction sets, it probably would be able. We probably would be able to get some you know decent performance. But like this is, I want to try and see if I can get to some you know action. There we go. But yeah, this is obviously definitely playable, and this is a game that you could would enjoy playing on the system if you had it. So this is at medium settings, I believe. So a little bit of lag spikes, yeah. But I mean, this is definitely good enough. So all right, let's try another game. Okay, another uh, pre-reviewed game, uh, Fallout 4, obviously. And um, looks like we are in the, uh, what is this place called again? Uh, Sanctuary. And we're getting, you know, this is uh, medium settings, 1200p. And we're getting about, like, you know, 60 to 40 FPS. With better optimization, this would be a, a pretty well-played game, too, as well. I mean, you'd probably be able to play it with this. I mean, it wouldn't be optimal, but, yeah, like I said, it's playable. So, I'll well, shoot this guy. I shoot this guy? Uh, sarcastic. Yes, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Alright, let's go ahead and we'll try another game. So. so the last game I'll be testing is another classic. This is CSGO. Uh, I wanted to see if it included like a multiplayer... I mean, I guess I did include multiplayer first-person shooter or Fortnite, but I forgot about that. But uh, a little bit more... Um, I was about to say competitive, but both games are pretty competitive. I guess a little bit more, uh, let's just say different. So I'm going ahead and just loading into a Dust 2 deathmatch. For some reason, I don't have any um, FPS counter. I don't have either, but I think this is running at 1200p medium settings. So, uh, taking a little long time to load. Uh, I don't remember CSGO taking this long, but I've heard that they bogged down the game quite a bit. But so far, the slate of games we tested... Uh, this really runs true is that here let me turn this volume down a little bit the, the, the games work obviously it's just that they don't work well I mean <laughs> that, that's to be expected I don't need no Shadamas over here but um, with better optimization you, you could run a, um, a lot better so I mean I don't know if you want to pair um, oh no, there's voice chat in here let me turn this off sorry Okay, let's just play um, CT real quick. Show my skills. Look at that, no scope. No scope. Ah, I got killed by the bots. I'm probably just as good at this game as I am in Fortnite. So, just, I mean, there's a lot of lag spikes on. We could probably lower the settings and stuff. I mean, if you're just playing this game for fun, it'll work. But, I mean, obviously, you're not going to be playing this system casually. I mean, you're not going to be playing on this system 
professionally or you know competitively but if you want just have fun i mean it should work so, i mean it's, as you can see it's working right now so okay so that goes it for um game testing i'm just gonna go uh you know get my general thoughts so let's exit out to the desktop so my closing thoughts on this um <laughs> this is basically sums up it's like a phenom too but worse Wow, you know, so that's such a bold statement. But really, you know, anything the Phenom 2 could do, it could do better. So I would not go out and obviously, you know, build a platform with these components. But if you have the components, you could still make them work for especially, you know, an office PC, a home PC, light, you know, eSport gaming. It would still work as long as the CPU instruction sets are, I mean, the games that you want to play uh, don't need AVX or SSC 4.1, 4.2. You're good to go, really. Uh, you could... Pair it with a, a definitely a weaker GPU, you know, maybe something from the Kepler series or maybe like a Radeon 7000 series GPU. Uh, anything, I mean, a 1060 is overkill. Uh, we are definitely CPU bound, if you couldn't tell. Uh, multitasking is all right. Um, it works. I mean, obviously, it's four cores. They're just slower. Uh, I want to say that a Core 2 Quad probably holds up better today. I think it was the faster choice back in the day. It's definitely the faster choice now. Um... Hmm, let's see some some positives. Uh, not many. <laughs> it's a that especially this CPU is 125 watt TDP. It puts out a lot of heat. It takes a lot of energy. It's not energy efficient. You're much better off with a Phenom. Uh, maybe one of the lower. There's a I think the B series, not the Black Edition series, but I think there's like a lower TDP, like a 95 watt TDP CPU. You're better off with that. You're better off with a um, a Core 2 Quad 9000 series CPU, like maybe like a 90. 550 I think that's a 2.83 gigahertz quad core 2 quad a lot more power efficient obviously the those are 45 nanometer this is a 65 nanometer chip uh yeah so I, I would probably title this as a video like the phenom 2 but worse but um it's really I mean obviously like I said it's a usable CPU but in terms of the three R's of re uh, reduce reuse and recycle first thing you want to like reduce your usage Oh, you want to reuse, which is the second most important one. So, I mean, if you have a use case for this, that makes sense. And where energy, you know, is either provided to you renewably or is cheap, then, yeah, that's fine to reuse the CPU. But really, I think you get to a point where certain, like, chips are just not worth it in terms of energy efficiency. So, like, you know, you could get a low, you could get, like, a, a no, nah, I wasn't going to say Raspberry Pi. I mean, maybe you can these days. You could get a Raspberry Pi that could do almost just about as much as this, obviously, without the x86 compatibility but um just like you get a like an amd apu that would blow this whole setup out of the water not the gpu side but definitely the cpu everything else it'll blow out of the water and it'll consume a fraction of the power okay so that's it um i think for my next video i might do a restoration i haven't done that yet oh, i have a old desktop that i was giving uh old being a windows vista or a desktop and i want to see about restoring it um like i said don't like don't comment don't subscribe <laughs> and um, I'll see you next time.